Well, good morning. Welcome to Calvary Church. My name is Dave Ross. I'm one of the pastors here. And I just want to welcome you if you're a guest. Thanks for joining us today. If you're a regular tender, thanks for being here as well. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the calendar has turned to the month of December. Today is the second day of December. And what that means is we get to start singing Christmas songs. And so, yeah, see, some of you like that. Some of you maybe not so much. Either way, let's stand together. Let's sing joyfully to our Savior about his birth. Joy, joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. As we continue to sing, let's engage in what God is doing and what he has done. Let's come and adore our king together.
You may have a seat. Well, good morning and welcome to Calvary Church. We are so glad that you're here. We're glad that you're here to help uh, us kick off the Christmas season. And I, Dave mentioned that uh, like it or not, Christmas is here. And I need to tell you, I don't like it. I love it. I'm just so excited for the season. I'm so excited for what we have planned throughout the entire month of, of the Christmas season here at Calvary Church, and I'm glad that you're here with us this morning. My name is Scott Messner. I'm part of the staff team here, and I just want to welcome you again to, to Calvary Church as we join together again. If it's your first time here, we are especially glad that you've decided for whatever reason to join with us this morning, and we would love the opportunity to greet you personally. This is a big room, and it's difficult for us to find you, but what we have is what we call the welcome gathering, and the welcome gathering is an opportunity for people like me, staff, and our senior pastor, Bo Eckert, and some of, key, uh, some of our key volunteers to, to be able to greet you personally, to have a conversation, to get acquainted, for us to get acquainted with you, for you to get a little more acquainted with, with who Calvary Church is. If you have questions or not, we'd love to answer them there. So immediately following this service, you go out any of the doors in the back, turn to your right, look for the signs that say welcome gathering, and just a couple of minutes of your time uh, to be able to get acquainted. Well, this morning, uh, we have something for you in mind. So if the students in the back could come forward at this time and uh, begin to hand out our invite cards for our Christmas services. Uh, you know, oftentimes at church, you don't get anything. But this morning, we have something for you that each one of us can take a few of them. And I'll fill in exactly what these cards are about. But today, we start our brand new Christmas series entitled Come Near that will run throughout the entire month of December. But we also are preparing specifically for Sunday, December 23rd, Monday, December 24th, for our Christmas services, because we recognize at this time of year, many people, whether they're regular church attenders or not, open themselves up, whether by tradition or by invite, to attend services specifically uh, around that time. And we want to leverage that opportunity to draw people near to Jesus through those services. So it's four identical services that will be taking place on that weekend. And with the invite cards that you're getting, feel free to grab a few. But we want you to consider through this month, who are the people in your family, in your workplaces, in your neighborhoods that you might already have a relationship with? In many instances, these cards have the information for you, and the invite comes through the relationship you have already built with those people. And so a couple of ways that we don't exactly intend for these cards to be used, like to go to the mall and in the middle of the food court to just take a stack and like throw them, isn't exactly what we have in mind. Uh, slyly slipping them to a cashier as you're making a transaction, again, not exactly what we had in mind, but through the course of this month, we know you, you meet many, many people, and often the topic and conversation comes to, you know, how, what do you do for Christmas? How are you celebrating Christmas? What is your traditions? And for many of you, being a part of our Christmas services is something that you value and, and are a part of. And so we think that's a, a natural extension out of a relationship with people you have to encourage and to invite them to consider coming to our Christmas services. Well, when it comes to our Christmas services, we often think about attend one, and we often say this at Calvary, attend one, serve at one and invite somebody to one. So the invite cards cover the invitation. The serving, in your bulletin this morning, there is a link uh, for you to go on and consider serving. We have needs in children's ministry and guest services. We'd love for you to sign up by December 16th. That helps so much uh, with being able to make a plan and making sure that we're in a good position to welcome guests well. If you're having trouble with the link, stop by the Connection Centers even today to get yourself signed up to be able to serve uh, at one of those services, to attend one, and then even to invite and attend with somebody. Well, lots happening with Christmas. The one other thing I want to draw your attention to, if you haven't already seen it, is in the middle of our Overlook area, uh, we have a manger scene with hay that I'm told is hypoallergenic, so everyone can stand down uh, with any health concerns. But it's an opportunity for this. Uh, we just want an opportunity to be able to interact with that, uh, to get pictures with your family or with your friends. We have some stuffed animals. They were never alive. They're pretend stuffed, so you can save the emails on that. Um, 
But it's an opportunity to just gather around, to make a memorable moment, to grab a picture or a selfie. And so I would encourage you, particularly families, but not just families, uh, if you don't have kids, don't, don't think that's just for the kids. Everyone's a kid at heart, and so dive in there. And I know at times we have different shepherds, and maybe there'll be some wise men through the month, but we look forward for, to just one other way to come together as a family and to celebrate this season together. So lots of things happening, uh, and even today after this service, we have lunch as we regularly do, and it's an opportunity for us here to just continue the conversation that started here as we open God's Word to continue that conversation over a meal. So if you don't have plans for a meal, it happens uh, over in the fellowship hall, out the doors, kind of go to your right, then look to your left. We would love to have you stay around for that. Lots of of, exci of exciting things happening throughout this entire month. We hope you're excited and we hope you're investing in the lives of people around you. And so with all that in mind, can we pause and bow for a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for the excitement that this time of year brings. We thank you for a season to celebrate the truth that you have come near by entering into our world at Christmas. Father, would you use this morning as we open your word for us as a body to draw near to you. Father, would you help each one of us to be open to the work that you want to do in our lives this morning. Father, I pray specifically for those facing a difficult season of life. Would the simple truth that at Christmas we celebrate, celebrate a baby who ultimately became the king who reigns forevermore. That in our difficulty, you made a way for us to come near to the king who at the fullness of time burst forth into our world. Father, I thank you for the way that you continue to bless this ministry, and I would pray that during this month that you would give us eyes to see opportunity, give us hearts to recognize needs, that we would be able to invest in people, not just to bring them back to a service, but to introduce them to the hope and to the reason that we celebrate in this season. Father, as we take up this offering this morning, would you use it to help others here and around the world come near to you for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'll invite the ushers forward for this morning's offering. Sacrifice, Christ the Messiah, 
Amen. We do applause and worship our Savior Jesus, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And that's the beauty of this time of year, that we remember that he came down as a baby, was born as a man, fully God and fully man, and lived a perfect life. And the King of kings came, and we see in Matthew, it says, Jesus came not to be served, but to serve others and be a ransom for many. And so, as a king, he didn't come to be served, he came to serve. And ultimately, we see in 1 John that he himself was the sacrifice that atoned for our sins. And not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. And so, as we sing to him, we sing and lift up not just the baby Jesus, but the man, fully God, fully man Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins and rose again. And only his name deserves that praise. So let's continue to sing together. You came down from heaven's throne. This earth you formed was not your home a love like this the world had never known a crown of thorns to mock your name forgiveness fell upon your face a love the world had never known. Lift them up. On the altar of our praise, let there be no higher name. Jesus, Son of God, you laid down your perfect life. You are the sacrifice. Son of God, you are Jesus, Son of God. You took our sin for our shame. 
Lord Jesus, we lift your name and your name alone up this morning. We remember your birth this month. We remember it for the purpose that you came to seek and to save the lost, to die for us and to raise again and give us new life. And so we thank you for that and we honor you and you alone and give you all the glory and all the praise this morning. And we pray this in your awesome name, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Bo Eckert, the senior pastor here at Calvary Church, and I am, just as Scott is, so, so excited for this Christmas season here at Calvary. I love all that surrounds Christmas. I love where we've landed this year when it comes to the theme of what we're going to talk about. Jesus has come near to us so that he can then invite us to come near to him. And we're going to unpack that truth and that reality all month long. If you haven't done so already, take your bulletin and look on the back. There's a description of the series 
There's the outline of the series so that you can see the theme for each week. You can see the passages that we're going to look at each and every week. And here's my encouragement for all of us. I know it's a busy month. I know December is a busy time. There's lots going on. There's uh, traveling. There's invitations to, to, to different events and parties and things that we do. And let's make sure we don't get so wrapped up and lost in all of that that we forget about why we're celebrating what we're celebrating. And my encouragement is make sure that your schedule allows you to be here. To, to come each and every week. Part of the reason, not the only reason, but part of the reason we started Monday night is when you can't be here on a Sunday that you can come on Monday um, and, and be a part of, of what's happening. So um, we're, we're excited about each message. We're excited about what's going to kind of unfold. So uh, look at those themes. See where we're going. Um, make sure that you're here um, each and every week. Um, and even that Sunday after Christmas, sometimes kind of between Christmas and New Year's, there's other things happening, but that Sunday right there at the, at the New Year, the 30th and 31st, um, is a part of this series. I'm excited about that message as well. So plan to be here uh, all month long. Um, the music's going to be great. It's going to be diverse and different each and every week, uh, as you can typically count on here at Calvary. And as Scott said, uh, that Christmas weekend, the 23rd and 24th, um, invite people to come. Make sure that you're here for that. There'll be invite cards and the baskets out in the lobby all month long. Um, love what we've done in the uh, Overlook area. If you haven't stopped by there with your kids to, to, to come near, uh, we, we certainly encourage you to do that. So today the series begins, and it begins with a story in Scripture that we don't associate with Christmas. But I'm going to do my best to try to convince you that it should be. It's a story that tells us why Jesus came near. At Christmas, we often focus on what happened that first Christmas. And we talk about Mary and Joseph and the angels and the shepherds and the manger and wise men, etc., etc., etc. And we'll get there. But today, we're not going to focus on the what of Christmas. We're going to focus on the why. And I think it's the best way to start this series. So I invite you to turn with me to Luke chapter 19. And we're going to look at the story of Zacchaeus. You say, that doesn't sound very Christmassy to me. Give me the opportunity to try and convince you. This story opens, it's part of the traveling narrative in Luke's gospel. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And the passage begins in verse 1 of chapter 19 this way. It says, he entered Jericho and was passing through. You say, that's a simple way to open a narrative passage, and it is, but it's incredibly profound. Read Scripture and read Scripture carefully. Luke had already told us that Jesus had set his face for Jerusalem because he understood why he had come. He knew he needed to end in Jerusalem to die on the cross for the sins of of the world. His destination was not Jericho. He was just passing through. He understood his purpose. He understood his destiny and his destination. It's significant because Jericho, for many people, was a destination. It was a beautiful little town. Great weather. People would often winter in Jericho. It was a rich town. But that wasn't Jesus' destination. He was just passing through. 
because he had come for a bigger purpose. But even though he was passing through, he didn't have blinders on. He was present in the moment and he was seeking. The story continues in verse 2. Luke tells us and says, And behold, that word sound familiar from the end of the one story? Remember what that word means? It means pay attention. Luke says, pay attention to this story. Pay attention to what I'm telling you. In the next verse, we're told that Jesus is surrounded by a crowd. And sometimes if this was the news media or if this was a newspaper reporter, the focus would be on the crowd and how many people were there following Jesus and how many people were around Jesus. But that's not Luke's purpose. Luke's purpose is behold, pay attention. I want to tell you the story of an individual because everyone has a story. And everyone's story matters to God. So Luke says, let me tell you the story of a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector. The gospel tells us a lot about tax collectors and sinners. Those two phrases appear a lot together. They're synonymous. But this is the only time in scripture that we're told about a chief tax collector. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. It meant he was in charge of all the other tax collectors. I believe that Zacchaeus was Jewish, but he worked for the Romans. And as a result, his fellow Jews didn't like him very much. The Romans said, you need to pay taxes... And they would contract out tax collecting to the lowest bidder. Rome wanted to make sure they got their money. But as long as they got their money, they didn't care how much the tax collectors took off the top. The text tells us he was rich. And we know from later in the text that part of the reason he was rich is because he was dishonest. He was a swindler. And he acquired great wealth. But even though this was true of him, he had heard about this Jesus fellow. And when he heard that Jesus was passing through his town... Luke tells us that he was seeking. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. Now maybe he just wanted to get a glimpse of this Jesus fellow. But I think there's more to it than that. He had heard the stories about Jesus' teaching. Maybe he had heard the stories about some miracles that he'd performed. So he is truly seeking to know who he was. And some of you this morning are just like Zacchaeus. You're seeking. If you're honest with yourself, you're not even sure why you're here today. Why you came, why you're tuned in, why you're listening but something in you is seeking, and you're seeking to know more, and you're seeking to find out who Jesus is. And this was true of Zacchaeus. But in his seeking, he had some obstacles that he needed to overcome. The text tells us that there was a crowd. The text also tells us that he was small in stature. And so he had some obstacles that he needed to overcome. 
Luke originally wrote this in the Greek language, and sometimes we gain a greater understanding when we look to the original language. And I looked that last phrase, he was small in stature, up in the Greek, and I want to read what it actually says in the Greek. It says this. It says, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. That's <laughs> what it actually says in the Greek. Now, I apologize to those of you that, you know, maybe you're new to church and you're like, why is that even funny? <laughs> you see, there's a kid's song about Zacchaeus being a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. Just in case some of you are wondering, it doesn't really say that in the Greek. <laughs> I don't want you to send me an email about that. <clears throat> but Zacchaeus had some obstacles to overcome. But he was determined. And so verse 4 tells us what he did to overcome those obstacles. The first thing he did was he ran. Most would say this was kind of culturally unacceptable and inappropriate for a Jewish man to, to run. And he not only ran on ahead, but he climbed up into a sycamore tree. Running and climbing in order to overcome the obstacles that were there. Both were out of the norm and somewhat culturally unacceptable. But he didn't really care, did he? He already had a negative reputation in the community. So he said, I don't care what people think of me. So I'm going to run and I'm going to climb because I'm seeking Jesus. For those of you that want to dig in deeper, don't turn there now, but let me give you a little assignment for later. When you have the opportunity, flip back to Luke chapter 18, one chapter right before. This is why it's important to read the Gospels as a whole. Read each Gospel individually because the author is intentionally wanting us to see what they're trying to communicate. Back in Luke 18 is the story of little children wanting to come to Jesus and the disciples are trying to keep them away and Jesus says, no, let the little children come to me because you need to receive the kingdom just as a child would, to have faith like a child. One chapter later, we see a grown man running and climbing. How's that for childlike faith as he's seeking Jesus? Later on in Luke 18, we get the story of a rich man who turned away sad because of his wealth. And Jesus responds and says, oh, how difficult it is for the rich to enter the kingdom. And his disciples looked at Jesus and said, well, then, who can be saved? And Jesus said, what's impossible for man is possible with God. And one chapter earlier, a rich man turned away from Jesus sad. But one chapter later, we see a rich man running and climbing trees with faith like a child and a rich man seeking and will ultimately find faith in Jesus. Don't miss those connections as we read Scripture carefully. The first half of this story is focused on Zacchaeus and who he is and what he did. As we move to verse 5, the focus turns to Jesus and who Jesus is and what Jesus had done. Verse 5 says, and when Jesus came to that place, when he came to the place where Zacchaeus was up in the tree, he looked up and he said to him, now before we see what Jesus said, we need to understand that what Jesus said will tell us a lot about who Jesus is and will tell us a lot about why Jesus has come near and will tell us a lot about how Jesus approached and how Jesus was seeking others. Did he know Zacchaeus? Not personally, but he knew all about him. He knew of his dishonest practices. Of course he did. And as he came to the base of that tree, 
Was Zacchaeus, I'm sorry, was Jesus more interested in making a point or was he more interested in making a difference? Sometimes as we interact with others, particularly others that are different than us or don't hold our same values, we might be more interested in making a point about what we think and what we believe than we are about making a difference in their life. Did Jesus come to the base of the tree and look up and say, stop being dishonest, pay back what you owe. Stop living an ungodly lifestyle and honor God. You're an evil tax collector, but I'll pray for you. Did he post on social media about how offended he is by Zacchaeus? He could have legitimately done all of those things. But that's not the approach that he took. Here's what he did say. He looked up into that tree and he said, Zacchaeus. He started by calling him by name. A few short verses later, we're going to see how the crowd referred to Zacchaeus. Do you know how the crowd referred to Zacchaeus? As a sinner. They didn't call him by name. They had him categorized and stereotyped. Do you know why Jesus called him by name? Because Jesus understands that everyone has a story. And everyone's story matters to God. So he called him by name, and he said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. Come down out of that tree, Zacchaeus. Jesus came down off of his throne in heaven, and he drew near to us. And then he invites us to draw near to him. Zacchaeus, I came down for you. Come down out of that tree because I want to have a relationship with you. Jesus continues to seek. Some of us, I don't want to be cheesy here, But some are in that proverbial tree doing who knows what with our lives. And Jesus is standing at the base of the tree and saying, come down. I'm seeking you. I'm seeking a relationship with you. So he says, Zacchaeus, come down. For I must stay at your house today. It was as uncommon then as it would be today that Jesus invites himself over. But how about we try that? Some people have said, man, it's difficult in Lancaster County. Nobody invites me over. So let's just flip it around. Start inviting yourself over to other people's houses. (laughs) Just see what happens. After church today, Turn to that person next to you and say, hey, I'm coming to your house for lunch today. (laughs) Just see how they respond. Maybe you're afraid of that already. That's why people leave early at the last song. (laughs) Don't think I don't notice. (laughs) Hey, but it is part of the reason that we serve lunch here in Fellowship Hall. Just come to our house. Come and eat with us. That'd be great. Get out of that tree, Zacchaeus. I want to spend some time with you. Verse 6. Man, what a great verse. So he hurried and he came down and he received him joyfully. How else would we receive Jesus? Man, no matter the hardships, no matter the difficulty... Do we receive Jesus with joy? Man, I want that to be true of me. 
How do we have a relationship with Jesus? We have a relationship with Jesus by engaging with his word. Do I come to his word joyfully? We have the opportunity to come and to worship and to praise. Do I come and worship and praise joyfully? Zacchaeus welcomed him and received him joyfully. Contrast that with the crowds. The crowds who had already categorized Zacchaeus. When the crowd saw it, they all grumbled. They had something else to complain about. Jesus has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. They'd put Jesus in their box. They'd already established their religion. This is right. This is wrong. This is who you hang out with. This is who you don't hang out with. But Zacchaeus comes down and receives him joyfully. It's a topic for a whole other sermon sometime, but I'll just slip it in here and talk more about it later. I think Jesus knew that other people didn't like who he associated with. But Jesus' approach and the way that Jesus sought others, not everyone, but some, he helped them to feel like they belonged even before they believed. Sometimes I think we flip that. We've got our categories and we've got our boxes. And we're okay fellowshipping and we're okay with people belonging as long as they believe first. But sometimes the belonging leads to the belief. It's another topic for another time. Verse 8. Zacchaeus stood and he said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. We see the result and the evidence of Zacchaeus' faith. What we don't see in this story is it doesn't say... Zacchaeus got down on a knee and prayed the sinner's prayer to receive Jesus into his heart. But what we do have is the evidence of the faith that he's placed in Jesus. A change of mind is the beginning of repentance, which leads to a change in action. A change of mind leads to a change of direction in our lives. So I think the action that he took that's described for us in verse 8 is evidence of the faith that he placed in Jesus. It's an overflow of gratitude, not an obligation. And I support that because of what Jesus says in verse 9. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come. For some of you who are seeking, today might be your day of salvation. But Jesus says, today salvation has come to this house since he is also, since he also is a son of Abraham. Did salvation come because of Zacchaeus' ethnicity? Did salvation come because he was part of the family of Abraham physically? Put your one-story thinking caps on. No. Not because he was part of the family of Abraham, but because he had a faith like Abraham can Jesus declare that he is the son of Abraham. Abraham's faith made him right with God. Zacchaeus' faith made him right with with God. And the final verse, we get our purpose statement. We get the reason why this is a Christmas story. And Jesus says, because the Son of Man came, the Son of Man has come near, 
For what purpose? Here's the why of Christmas. It's to seek and to save the lost. Jesus came. Jesus was born to seek and to save. Don't miss that this holiday season. We love the cute baby in the manger. We love the cute animals in the stable. And there's a time and a place for all of that. It's great. But that baby who was born and placed in a manger came to live, to grow up, and live a perfect sinless life in order to die on the cross to provide the saving. And as a result, he is continually seeking the lost. Two visuals to help us with this. Does this picture remind you of anything? For those that have been at Calvary Church for a little bit of time, does this remind you of anything? Do you know what this picture is from? This was the image, this was the theme for Easter this past year at Calvary Church. We talked about Jesus coming and dying for those who are far off. Acts chapter 2. Peter preached about the life and the death and the resurrection and the exaltation of Jesus. And as a result, people came to Peter and the other disciples and said, what shall we do? And Peter said, believe, repent, be baptized. You and your, your household and your family. Because this promise is for you and it's for all of those who are far off. It's for all of those who are lost. It's the reason that Jesus has come near. So we make the connection between Jesus coming for those who are far off and the reason why he has come near. Why did he come? He came for those who are far off. He came seeking and he came saving the lost. Just like Zacchaeus. Just like maybe some here today. He came to seek and to save the lost. And he continues to seek and to save the lost. As I said earlier, some of you are here today. You're not even sure why you're here. And I would submit to you, is it the, the, the reason that you're here today, the reason that you're tuned in, the reason that you're listening, is because God, is because Jesus is seeking you. And I know it might sound offensive in our current cultural context, but some of you are lost. And some of you say, I'm not offended by that. I realize I'm lost. It's the reason I'm here. If I wasn't lost, I'd just kind of be out living my life up in a tree somewhere. But I realize I'm lost and that's why I've come. And Jesus is seeking you. And he says, you need to be saved. You need to have your relationship with your heavenly father reconciled and restored. And Jesus says, I came, I was born to die to pay the price for your sins so that when you put your faith and trust in me, I can restore your broken relationship with God. He has provided a way to be saved. And as a result, he has come seeking the lost. It's why he has come near. Our nativities, they tell us the what of Christmas. Mary and Joseph, manger, shepherd, wise men. 
Zacchaeus. The story of Zacchaeus reminds us of the why. So I have an interesting proposal for you this morning. What if we added Zacchaeus to our nativities? You only need a wee little spot for him. (laughs) Just a little tiny spot there in the corner. All of the rest of the nativity tells us the what of Christmas. But if we add in Zacchaeus, it reminds us of the why. It reminds us why Jesus has come near. So here's my challenge for the creative ones out there. We now have a Hobby Lobby in Lancaster. It's the Christian craft store. Sorry for those that love Michaels and AC more. Let me give you guys equal time. What would it look like to add Zacchaeus to your nativity? To remind us of the why. I would love to see those pictures just as we have done here. It will be a reminder to all of us that he came to seek and to save the lost. Let's make sure that that truth doesn't get lost this Christmas season. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful that you came down for us, that you sent Jesus down for us, that Jesus has come near so that then he can invite us to come near. And thank you for the story of Zacchaeus. It's a reminder that everyone has a story and every story matters to you. Every story in this room, every person in this room has a story and it matters to you. And as you are seeking and saving the lost, there are some that are here that are lost. And the invitation is there to come. Jesus has provided a way for us to come down out of those trees because he wants a relationship with us. Thank you for providing a way May we receive you joyfully, just as Zacchaeus did. And may Zacchaeus in that tree remind us of the why of Christmas. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to invite us to stand. We're going to sing a song as we close. It's not necessarily a Christmas song, but it reminds us of the saving and the seeking that Jesus has done. So let's sing together.
Amen. Did you see the seeking and the saving in that song? You alone can rescue. He's the only one that can save. And then we sang, you came down to find us. He came seeking because he wants to save the lost. That's what Christmas is all about. I look forward to seeing the way that you add Zacchaeus to your nativity set. That ought to keep some of you busy for a while. Lunch is served in Fellowship Hall. Welcome gathering is happening right now. We're off to a great start, and we're looking forward to the entire month. God bless you all. You're dismissed.